Now recently, the princess of the United Arab Emirates, the daughter of the Taghut, named as Mahra Muhammad Rashid Al Maktoum, has announced on social media that she divorced her husband due to her husband, rightfully or wrongfully, I'm not going to investigate that or talk about that at the moment, spending time with other people, i.e. wives or what, whatever, I haven't really understood this. But that aside, I'm not getting into the drama. Is such a divorce really valid? Evidently she said, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. This is known as triple talaq, accepted by the majority or the mainstream of the schools of jurisprudence under Islamic law, that which is known as Islamic law. law. But is this valid? Is what she's doing right? Her announcing it on social media publicly is very funny and laughable. So that drama aside, is such a practice valid? We've recently, um, maybe a few weeks back, have assessed this topic due to the severity of Islamic law being misapplied in society. How people misunderstand, mis misconstrue and misapply the divine injun injunctions, which instead of benefiting society, they ruin it. This triple talaq, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. Is divorce instantaneous or is it procedural? Is there a procedure to it? Let's assess this by not going to the mainstream, but going to the actual sources. Now, this is very dangerous in general from the man's point of view, because the man is the one who initiates the divorce. Because if a woman gets divorced by her husband instantaneously in a triple talaq form, that woman becomes haram for the man until she marries someone else. This is known. And now imagine in haste or in anger, a man says, for example, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. Then he needs to marry someone else to get his wife back if he's in, if he's in regret. No, the Quran and the Sunnah did not prescribe it like this. So this halal and marriage, etc. is invalid. Which Imam Zayd and Ali, according to Musnad Zayd, which is reliability, let's say, it's in question, but he condemns such a marriage. This is hila, this is invalid, this is trickery, this is deception. That has ruined the people of ghira, the people of honor and dignity, who are prideful, protective over their women. And on the other hand, this woman is divorcing her husband in this way, ironically. Anyway, so the verse reads, so, Surah 2, verse 230. So if a husband divorces his wife, i.e. three times, then it is not lawful for him to remarry her until after she has married another man and then is divorced. Then it's permissible for them to reunite as long as they feel they are able to maintain the hudud, the limits of Allah. These are the limits set by Allah, which he makes clear for people of knowledge, end quote. Now let's con contextualize this. I'm reading my article, which I will upload a PDF. This particular ruling, let's contextualize it. Let's assess the following verse to comprehend it properly and give us due right. The next verse reads, when you divorce women, women, and they've almost reached the end of their waiting period, i.e. the idda period, either retain them honorably or let them go honorably. But do not retain them only to harm them or to take advantage of them. Whoever does not surely wrongs his own soul. Do not take Allah's revelations lightly. Remember Allah's favor upon you, as well as the book and wisdom he has sent down for you, for your guidance. Be mindful of Allah and know that Allah's perfect knowledge of all things. Surah 2, 2, 3, 1. Now let's analyze this. Look, when divorce is initiated by the man, there is an idda period, there's a waiting period. It's not instantaneous. And look what Allah says. Either keep them honorably or let them go honorably and do not keep or retain them to take, to take advantage or to harm them or to cause havoc. Do not wrong them. Now I'm going to come back to this because the initial verse, the one before this says what? If you divorce your wife, they need to marry someone else. And in the verse after it clarifies that if you do divorce them and during the idda period, either if you don't regret both parties agree, keep them preserve your marriage or leave them honorably and do not harm them. So, now the context of the initial verse is comprehended better now. Alhamdulillah. We can deduce or understand a few things from this verse or these verses. Firstly, we understand that there is no instant triple divorce from the man's side in one go or one sitting because this is a foreign practice to both to the Quran and the Sunnah. Secondly, if divorce is initiated, there is a time period, the idda period that needs to be respected, that needs to be fulfilled before divorce is finalized or actualized. 
During this Iddah period, the two couple, the couple can either conclude their divorce, i.e. finalize it, or they can come back together in marriage. And in this time period, they have adequate, adequate time to, to contemplate, to think, to reflect about their marriage, about their situation, about their circumstances. Thirdly, there is no instantaneous divorce just because the man, or in this case the woman, decides to initiate a divorce procedure. So divorce is a procedure, it's not instantaneous. I want to re-emphasize on this again and again until it gets into the head of people. So accordingly, we understand that the conditional and procedural nature of divorce from another Quranic verse is in chapter 62, 65 verse 2, which reads that when they've almost reached the end of their waiting period, Iddah period, either retain them honorably or separate from them honorably and two call and call two of your reliable witnesses and let them witness. So now... <laughs> The mainstream practice, do they, most of them, demand or request two witnesses to actualize and finalize this divorce procedure? No. So where is this I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you from? Two witnesses, are they a requirement or are they a recommendation? Here we see that they're a requirement. Allah says, call two witnesses. So Surah 65 2 establishes a key condition that has been missed and neglected by the majority which is that two witnesses are a prerequisite they are a requirement for divorce to actually finalize although the quran clearly mentions these two witnesses most people do not practice this or take heed of the essential detail this religious prescription by the quran what this means is that the husband cannot instantly divorce his wife as he likes without any procedure or gradual process of laws regulations and requirements so more importantly, people regard, in, in general disregard this important detail of divorce, which is Idda period, no free divorces, procedure, two witnesses. Now let's break this down. How a divorce is supposed to be, or how a marriage and a divorce is. The journey and procedure is as follows. Let's give, let's say six steps as we have given. The man proposes to the woman, gets married with two witnesses, a dowry, permission from the welly, and then they get married. The marriage gets finalized. Then, in order for them to initiate divorce, they wait for the period, the Idda period. Moms to think about, to contemplate their marriage. Then they acquire two witnesses. Then their divorce gets finalized. Then they get remarried with the same conditions for a second time. Then they get divorced for a second time with a, with a few moms included with the same conditions with arbitrators to contem they, they're contemplating about their situation and the affairs again then their divorce gets finalized with the uh, witnesses again but then, then they get married again a third time with the same conditions like mahar witnesses wali etc again then the couple get divorced for a third time a final time once again with the same details conditions as mentioned above so now the question arises is this normal? Is this healthy? Is this practical? Should this be the norm? Should this be easy? No. Hence why the Quran says what it says. Hence why the Quran prescribes what it prescribes. Is this a normal? Is this a common issue that occurs with normal healthy marriages? Obviously it's abnormal and disliked and difficult for a couple to go through these several stages, especially for the woman. Especially the woman that can only marry one man, according to Islamic law, whereas men can uh, be polygamous. Therefore, this is a possible reason, a hikmah, why the Quran forbids the divorced couple from going back together for a fourth, fourth time. This time, the Quran commands, the woman needs to move on with her life and marry someone else instead of the same ex-husband she married three times. And this makes sense. This makes sense for multiple reasons for those who can't fathom it. Just, just on a side note, there was a, there's a Turkish secular atheist who's always critical of Islam and he makes blunders oftentimes. He made a blunder with this topic as well and we've written this in response to him initially. Diamond Tem or whatever his name is. But now we are making this video for the benefit of the Ummah inshaAllah. So now we understand the reasoning and the wisdom of Surah 2 uh, verse 231 which reads When you divorce women 
and they've almost reached the end of their waiting period, either retain them honorably or then let them go honorably. But do not retain them to only harm them or take advantage. Evidently, the Quran protects the rights of the woman. Allah protects women's right in these verses. Hence why it commands the man to not retain or keep the woman during the Iddah period. To harm or abuse or to hurt her. Evidently, many men abuse their divorced ex-wives by not allowing them to remarry, move on and have their life. Which naturally comes from an extreme protective jealousy. And this jealousy ruins the life of the woman. So in addition to those verses, the Quran also says, those who swear not to have intercourse with their wives must wait four months if they change their mind. Then Allah certainly will forgive and most merciful. But if they settle on divorce, then Allah is indeed all hearing, all knowing. Divorced women must wait three monthly cycles before they can remarry. It's not lawful for, for them to conceal what Allah has created in their wombs if they truly believe in Allah in the last day. So we know that man, many men feel ownership over women when they let go of their ex-wives, which harms the woman even more. So now imagine this situation where a man has repeatedly, as we show in the procedure, marrying, divorcing, marrying, divorcing, marrying, divorcing the, free, the woman three times, the same woman, with all those, long, or with all those procedures. Isn't this clearly traumatizing and harmful for the woman? Yes, it definitely is. The divorcee cannot move on from unreliable marriage of free divorces properly, despite the man being permitted to have other partners or wives. So this is why the woman becomes forbidden for that particular man who decided to divorce his wife three times. So to re-emphasize and highlight this point, this is precisely why the Quran says regarding this matter, either retain them honorably or let them go honorably. And do not retain them to harm them or to take advantage of them. Chapter 2, 2, 3, 1. So as a consequence, the Quran's solution to this societal and marital problem is for the woman to get detached from the former husband that they got divorced three times and actually move on with her life for a new husband. Because it becomes evident that if a new marriage doesn't mature, that this particular woman is getting stuck and thus harmed in a relationship where it's just hanging without the marriage going anywhere. This type of marriage is evidently toxic and trapping her and preventing her from her actual freedoms, freedom. So she cannot continue with the marriage, nor can she leave it, leave it comfortably. Because she's getting married, divorced, procedure, idda period, marriage, divorce, Idda period, witnesses, what is this? Whereas the man is having four wives. So the invalid, invalidity of the halal and marriage is self-evident. There is no such thing as this filthy action of these men marrying their ex-wives, taking them back. No, in actuality, that woman is supposed to initiate a, an, an actual marriage with a new husband if they don't, if they don't with, with, with sincere intentions, not with hayla. If it doesn't work, they get divorced. Or if the husband dies, they get divorced. And if they want, she wants to go back to her ex-husband, then she can. Because she moved on. This is what we see. This is the possible wisdom that we understand from these ayat. So, there's the har as well. In, for example, chapter 58, 2 to 4. Where if a man says to, says to his wife to... Uh, hurt her and to basically divorce her where you are to me as my mother's backside he needs to wait months he needs to free a slave or f uh, feed 60 people or fast 60 consecutive days just because you hurt his wife with those words so Allah clearly this is another karino indicator that he shows importance to the feelings and the san uh, sanctity and the honor of the woman the honor of the woman is preserved hence why this prescription is given which is marry someone else after three divorces. But what we understand most importantly, going back to the initial point that we raised, there is no instantaneous with divorce. Divorce is a procedure, there's a way to do it, there are usul, there are principles, and this is now a message to that husband of UAE, do not hurt your wives, give their due right, honor them. Men and women are supposed to honor one another according to Islamic law. That is the Furqan, that is the uh, Mizan, that is the barometer. What are the laws and regulations of the Quran? What is my right upon you? What's your right upon me? What do we need to do? What are the procedures? Divine law needs to be implemented in society. 
This is why we always emphasize on Tawheed al hakimiya that the right to give hukum, to legislate, does not belong to your father, does not belong to your brothers, does not belong to your family, does not belong to your cousins, does not belong to the Taghut. All the Taghut's laws are invalid and batil. The arbitrator, the hakim, the legislator, the authority is none but Allah. Hukum is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator. The creator created us, he owns all the world, he has dominion, so he governs, he legislates, he makes halal, he makes haram. And those who go against that are in kufr, are in fisk, are in volume, are in disbelief, oppression, and evil. Great evil. And so this is the message for everyone. No Islamic law, do not violate it, do not manipulate it, and go back to the clear text of the Quran and the Sunnah, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.